Love Tribe. What's going on, guys? Thank you for tuning in to today's show. We got a great one for you where we talk about how to apologize how to better. say sorry. Mm, why is it so darn hard? Just do it. <laughs> oh, th- there you go. That's the, that's all you have to do. <laughs> no, actually, we have Dr. Jen Thomas on the show today. And she's the one to tell us how to she do it. Is, because yeah. she is a TED speaker, psychologist and author and co-authored a book all about apologizing with none other than Gary Chapman, the author of The Five Love Languages. And that book is called When Sorry Isn't Enough. And we really dive into this and give you a silly story about Sarah and I having a spat and maybe not apologizing this morning. (laughs) And uh, yeah, just really a lot of great stuff in here. Yeah, as always, we really appreciate you guys tuning in, sending us your feedback, telling your friends and family. We got to start a tell your friends and family listener drive again. I feel like we did that a few few months ago. (laughs) And uh, there's no way to know if it's happening, but we're continuing to grow. So whether or not you're telling people, we appreciate you guys for tuning in. Enjoy today's show. Today's show is brought to you by our online course, Spark My Relationship. Create more passion, improve your communication, and build a stronger, more intimate connection with your partner in less than 90 days. We've collaborated with 15 therapists and psychologists to bring you the strategies marriage therapists teach their clients. To unlock a special offer only for I Do Podcast listeners, visit sparkmyrelationship.com slash unlock. That's sparkmyrelationship.com slash unlock. Hi, Jen. Thank you so much for joining us on the show today. Hey, Sarah. It's great to be with you and Chase today. Today, we're going to talk about one that's pretty timely. As Sarah and I had a little spat this morning, a silly <laughs> one, where as they usually are, pretty silly, where kind of both of us did not do the best job of saying we're sorry. And so we're going to dive into this and maybe we can start by having you tell us why it's so hard to say sorry, I guess, the right way and why it's usually not enough. Mm. Well, the main problem is that usually we think we're right. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and so um, we don't want to jump in and say, I'm sorry, if we think, you know, the other person is really the cause of the problem. Also, some of us didn't have very good role models when we were young for accepting responsibility or making things right again. So Gary Chapman's passion and mine as well is to help people know how to apologize and how to Um, specifically say words that the other person might be waiting to hear in an apology. What we learned is that people have their own kind of magic words for a good apology, and we don't often talk about what those are. Ooh, what are they? Can you tell us? (laughs) Well, yes, he and I coined the term apology languages for those words that each person wants to hear. And we did some research and looked, and we found that there are five different phrases that people sometimes want to hear an apology. And we laugh and said, you know, we actually weren't looking for five, although with the five love languages, we know that (laughs) Gary Tevin really likes that number. Uh, But it was just a coincidence. And so um, we, as I said, we coined the term apology languages for these five different ways of saying my bad. Do you want me to go ahead and take it from the top with those five? Yes, that'd be great. Okay, so the first one is saying I'm sorry or expressing regret, and this is the one that I was saying to my husband um, when this idea first came about, and I realized that he just wasn't satisfied with what I was saying. One time I had apologized that way, and he actually said a minute later, but if you would just apologize. And I said, well, JT, I did apologize. I said I was sorry. What did you want to hear? And his answer became our second language of apology. He said, I wanted to hear you say you were wrong, Mm. which is really about accepting responsibility. And the problem with saying I'm sorry is that as JT and many husbands well know, it doesn't mean that you accept that you were at fault because I can be really sorry that something happened to you. um, But they're looking for 
us to accept the responsibility. It's like if we were in a court of law. He wanted for me to plead guilty, and he was waiting for me to do it. And then our third apology language is making amends. And this is a big one in AA. They want to know, how are you going to go back and make things right with the people that you've hurt if you are an alcoholic? But it's also really important, like in the customer service arena, we want to know not just that a business um, regrets what happened to us, but we want that coupon for a free appetizer or whatever they're going to do to show us how sincere they are. And then our fourth apology language is about how are you going to change the plan? So letting the person know, I'll really try not to do that again. And here is what I'm going to change so that um, this will be prevented in the future. Now, we can't promise it will change, but they're waiting to hear um, what reminder are you going to set or what kind of um, new plan are you going to put in place? Because I might be willing to forgive you again this time, but I'm really running out of patience. They want something to change. And these five actually build on each other. Um, your listeners might be thinking, yeah, those all sound good. Um, I and was. the fifth <laughs> one is, uh, yeah, the fifth one is kind of the cherry on the top. So what have I not um, said yet that might be included in a good apology? I want to invite you all to think about that. And um, the, our fifth apology language is kind of rare. It's actually a request for forgiveness. So asking the person, um, will you please forgive me? And what we found is that only 3% of our survey respondents most wanted to hear that. But for that 3%, it's really important. And you could say all of the other four phrases, and they might feel like you're kind of holding out on them. And yet you're very sincere. You just, that wasn't in your script from your childhood. And so um, what we're trying to do is to help people who are apologizing Think about, well, what is the other person waiting for me to say? And if you feel like you've offered a good apology and it wasn't accepted, we invite everyone to run through these five languages and to think about, oh, which of those isn't my primary apology language? Maybe I skipped one and can I go back and give it another try? It's almost like a roadmap to figuring out the best way your partner accepts an apology. So really going through these five almost steps, would you call them, of, of figuring out the best way your partner reacts to an apology? That's right, Sarah. And my husband and I um, co-lead a premarital class at our church. And so as it happened, we actually had this argument where he didn't really care for my phrase, I'm sorry, uh, the weekend that we were getting ready to go and teach this class of engaged couples. And so when we went to them, we said, you all probably already know each other's love language. That's a you know, helpful concept. It's been widely studied. And yet what we've realized is that they may have a phrase that shows them also not not just that you love them, but that you're sincerely apologetic. And so we had them do a breakout that weekend and just talk with each other about when you hear a good apology, what is included? And when you hear an apology that really lacks something, what do you think is missing? And we told them the chances are that whatever they say, that's their apology language. And so you should jot that down because if you engage couples haven't had an argument yet, you surely will by your wedding day or on your wedding day, and you're going to need this phrase. Well, Sarah and I have been together for 11 years, and I'm just now, as you're saying all this, it's very timely, like I said, and I'm identifying a lot with the changing the plan uh, apology. Mm. Of like, what are you going to do? Because mm -hmm. I think this is valuable just for, for this show. But basically what happened was, is Sarah made a request for me to, to grab her a uh, wrap for lunch. This is like mm -hmm. an hour ago <laughs> <laughs> and we're over it, but I, I just want to run this down. And right. it was a chicken wrap. Chicken wrap was not there. I called her a couple of times. She didn't answer to see if, you know, I could get her a different wrap but then I just didn't get anything because, I don't know, I, she wanted a chicken wrap. I get home. I say, <laughs> Sarah's laughing right now. <laughs> I say, I say, hey, sorry, 
they're out of chicken wraps. Sounds ridiculous as I recall this. <laughs> but she says, hey, sorry, out of, out of chicken wraps. And then what was your response? Kind of like. Well, did why they have any other wrap? Yeah, did, did yeah. You... <laughs> like basically, why didn't you get me something else is the way I took it. <laughs> Instead of just saying, thank you for going you know, it's okay. I, I I had this expectation that I would have gotten a different one for him and I wanted him to have done that the same. And so I kind of gave a little attitude and I didn't apologize. And I, I, yeah, you know, we worked through it, but. But going back to mm-hmm. tie this back into the apology stuff, I think there's a lot here, the yeah. expectations and stuff. But Sarah was like, and then I told her, I was like, I forget exactly, but well, I called you, I tried, you know, it just and it makes me feel, you know, kind of whatever I said. I'm up, I try. I'm trying to help you out here, and you're giving me crap about it. And then she kind of doubled down, of like, "Well, I would have got you. whatever." She wasn't trying to be mean or vindictive, but you know, we're off. She was she was hangry, as we say. She was hungry. She was waiting for her right, food. Right, right. <laughs> so, that was one thing that went through my mind. Yeah. You're talking about lunch here. Yeah. You know, people want that. Also, when there's time pressure. Yes. Things can get worse, right? So you don't have all day for um, Sarah, for Chase to show up with this wrap because you all have an interview to do. Um, And then that can make people more short tempered. Yes. Yeah. Like I said, there's so much here. But but with the apology stuff, if she had had said once I expressed that the way I felt, she just said, I'm I'm sorry, I, I won't do that again. Um, if I ask you for something mm-hmm. and you don't, you know, it's not there, I, I won't. So I not won't, doing it in the yeah, future. I won't, I won't do, mm-hmm. I won't repeat that. I would have been like, oh, that feels really good. And I'm just identifying this kind of as you were talking and thinking about, you know, why when she said, did you say you were sorry? <laughs> <laughs> I did After, say I'm sorry. <laughs> kind of went back and forth <laughs> for a little bit. It was kind of ridiculous, but but um, at any rate, it, it's valuable. And like I said, after 11 years of being together, um, we're just discovering Still learning, this, yeah, yeah a new way time. to apologize. Right. Yeah. Apologies are all around us every day. There's usually a news story um, about them, and it's, it's fu- a funny coincidence that you all ran into the need to say, I'm sorry, this very morning. And um, the way I look at offenses is that they're inevitable. You know, as we live and breathe, we're going to offend people or disappoint them. And when that happens, it's like it creates a roadblock between us and the other person. And what apologies do is they come in and they move the roadblock out of the way. And if it was something serious, then they open the doorway to the possibility of forgiveness and reconciliation. So what may come to mind first for us is what we want to hear in an apology. But the really critical piece is not just to think about what I want to hear from other people, but what they're waiting to hear from me. I think it's very important to have these skills and and to employ them. However, I wonder at what point are we expecting too much of our partner? Like our partner needs to apologize to us perfectly for me to forgive them. Like that element of this, like that we have, we need our partner to treat us in their apology just the right way in in order for us to be happy. Let's take a break to talk about today's sponsors. Today's episode is brought to you by Native. Native creates safe, simple, and effective deodorants that smell amazing and actually work. Their formula contains simple ingredients that you can understand and read so you know everything that is in your deodorant. Native is aluminum-free and it's also vegan and never tested on animals. Native has over 10 scents for men and women, including their classic scents like our personal favorite, Coconut mm, and vanilla. Smells so good. Yeah. <laughs> Plus rotating seasonal scents, so you're guaranteed to find one you love. They also offer an unscented formula and a baking soda free formula for those with sensitivities. And Native is also super excited, and so are we, for the relaunch of their toothpaste line. Just like their deodorant, there is only good ingredients, none of those chemicals or parabens. And they use a special blend of naturally derived cleansers, flavors, and whiteners to deliver a great brushing experience. They have two minty flavors with the option of fluoride or fluoride-free that will leave your teeth whiter and fresher than ever before. 
And if you're still not convinced, <laughs> check out the over 9,000 five-star reviews from happy customers who made the switch to Native. Try Native risk-free with free returns and exchanges in the U.S. For 20% off your first purchase, visit nativedeodorant.com and use promo code IDO20 during checkout. That's nativedeodorant.com and use promo code IDO20 at checkout. Today's episode is also brought to you by Dipsy. We're excited about this one. This we is are. interesting <laughs> and new. And if you love that amazing first date butterflies in your stomach type of feeling and you're looking for a little excitement on your terms, Dipsy can help you get in the mood with no date required. Whoa. How does that even happen? <laughs> Let us tell you. Dipsy is an audio app full of short, sexy stories and guided sessions that are designed to turn you on and help you get in touch with yourself. Their stories are relatable and immersive, so you feel like you are right there. And there truly is something for everyone, no matter what you're into. They add new content every week, so there's always more to explore. You can find stories about a spontaneous hookup with the hot stranger. Ooh. Interesting. <laughs> Getting closer with that sexy yoga instructor. That's you, interesting. Spin instructor. <laughs> or even stories about trying that new toy together. The guided sessions can also help you unlock new confidence or heighten intimacy with your partner. So for this new year, try a new way of getting turned on with Dipsy because we are. And so for our listeners of the show, Dipsy is offering a 30 day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash I do. That's a 30 day free trial when you go to Dipsy, D I P. S E A stories dot com slash I do. Dipsy stories dot com slash I do. So you raised an important question about um, how do our partners want to be treated? And we may walk around without any idea of what they expect to hear from us and an apology. Often we don't even know when people want an apology. But sometimes we do. Sometimes, as I could tell with JT, I knew he was irritated and that he wanted for me to accept responsibility. And when you have that sense that someone wants an apology, it raises the issue of blame. And the way I view blame is it's like a hot potato that we pass around. Nobody really wants to hold it, um, usually, but we tend to cast it onto other people. And so when you watch a crunchy interaction like you all shared about the one today around lunchtime, what is often going on if you deconstructed it is you might see, well, um, you know, I tried to do the, the thing of getting the specific rep that you asked for, <laughs> but I couldn't. And then I tried to reach you to ask for what you wanted instead, but I couldn't reach you. And it's like, well, who's fault is it that um, Sarah couldn't be reached? And, then, you know, that's not Sarah's fault necessarily. Sarah might say, well, you know, I was busy or I have to keep my ringer off because I was um, doing interviews today or something else. And then sometimes a person will ask a, a follow-up question. And if you look at that, um, the follow-up question is often about, but where does the blame really lay? Mm. And um, the challenge with that is is that what they're asking for is that apology. And a question I often get asked is, what do you do if you don't feel like you owe an apology? Or, and the opposite, what if you feel like someone owes you an apology and they have no idea about it? Have either of you all run into that problem before? Oh, yeah. I think this morning, like, because how you, when you first started out and you said, most people feel like they are right in this situation. And I think in that moment, Chase and I were both feeling like we were right. Like I felt he should have just gotten something and Chase felt like he, that it was good enough for him to have just gone. So I think, yeah, we've, we've definitely been there. So tell us what to right. do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what's the solution in that situation? Let me tell you what it's not. Um, some people will apologize even though they don't think they did anything wrong. And we call that peace at any price. And we actually say that's not what you should do because that tends to backfire. If you're really, 
thinking, well, you know, I'm not sure that even if I thought about it really hard that I would have done anything differently, then maybe what you need to do is have a further conversation um, and maybe talk about what you would do differently next time. But if you give an apology that you really feel like they're demanding, but you don't owe, you can end up resenting that person. And also they'll pick up that your apology isn't completely sincere. Now, here's a phrase that can sometimes work um, when you're in, stuck in that position where someone wants an apology and um, you're not really feeling it. You feel like the blame is more shared or on them or on, you know, outer space or the Internet or whatever is going wrong. Sometimes the phrase, um, I wish, can be helpful. Like, oh, I really... Um, for Chase. I really wish I could have gotten through to you because I really um, didn't know what to do and I didn't want to waste our money on some kind of flavor that you really don't like. I know that you're kind of particular about your flavors and, um, you know, money doesn't grow on trees. So I was trying to be cautious, but I really wish I had jumped on in and gotten you a different flavor since time is short today. Couldn't have said it better. See there, I didn't. <laughs> yeah, I didn't really apologize, but I did say, "Yeah, you you kind of ha- you have a point there, and I wish it had gone differently." Or, or and then that can lead into what are we going to do differently next time? And then Sarah, you may have ended up saying something like, uh, "Well, yeah, next time maybe I'll I'll clarify or I'll give you a second choice if the chicken's not available because I don't want us to wind up in this." kind of awkward spot again where you feel like you took the time to try to do what I wanted and then I ended up frustrated with you because that doesn't feel good. Beautiful. Yeah, I think that's a great alternative and really a way to almost smooth things out in a nice conversation where there's not, where you're not blaming your partner. Right. You're trying to put yourself in their shoes and say, oh yeah, I could feel, you know, how that would be hard. Like, um, back to Chase's situation, maybe there were um, you know, other people in line behind you and you were feeling rushed. And it's just hard to think in those situations of, gosh, if I were her, what would she want me to do? It's a tough dilemma. Um, but hey, it gave us some fresh material for us to talk about <laughs> in the podcast today. Exactly. <laughs> so what would you say to your partner if you want an apology and uh, you feel like, they're they're not given one. They're like they haven't even tried. Right. Yeah. This comes up a lot, um, both at home and if you think about in the office, people will often be offended and feel like they have no idea. And so I'm just going to write them off or avoid them um, because it's really awkward to confront someone. But what we say is that you can do it in a caring way, and that really, if someone has upset you to the point that you're going to change the status of the relationship or pull away or break off with them, that it really is better to be upfront with them and to let them know that, um, that something that they did bothered you. Now I like the uh, sort of an Oreo method or sandwich method where you start and end with a positive and then you put the meat of the issue in the middle. So, um, if you, if this was in a marriage or dating relationship, I would say something positive like, you know, hey, I really want us to be able to talk through um, things that don't go right. And I know you can't read my mind. So I wanted to um, tell you about something that didn't sit right with me the other day or this morning. (laughs) Um, Because, you know, I don't want us to have unsaid things between us. And I really, um, I care about you. And I know you care about my feelings too. And then you could jump into Um, what the problem was, something you'd like for them to do differently or a way that they could be more caring towards you. Um, One example, a recent thing that my husband and I talked through was if we were out at a social event together and maybe I didn't know many people there. um, Or let me flip the example so that um, it wouldn't be bad on him not introducing Mm -hmm. me. Let me say he doesn't know many people. (laughs) and. So the burden is on me to, if he walks up, to try to bring the conversation to a place where I could introduce him quickly. But maybe I'm Chatty Kathy and I um, 
was going along on some topic and then I asked the person a follow-up question because I'm so interested in what they're saying when really while I had the floor, it would have been a good time for me to introduce my husband. And so he might come to me the next day and say, you know, I know you um, didn't mean to leave me out, but it would mean a lot to me if you would um, introduce me as soon as you can when I walk up to your group so that I could feel more a part of things. And um, I would feel more like you were glad I was there. And then um, to do the sandwich method with this, after he gives that request of something that I could change, then he might want to end it with a positive as well so that um, I don't feel, you know, like this is you know, a huge deal for him, he could kind of soften it and say, um, you know, but overall I had fun at your party and I was glad I came. I just, it would be helpful to me if we could have a better understanding about that next time. And so in that situation, I'd get the feedback about something that um, was causing a barrier between us or causing frustration for him, um, but it, it doesn't have to lead to an argument and hopefully it wouldn't. And then on my part, I think it's important for us to talk about, well, how do you receive this kind of feedback? And obviously, I don't want to respond with something that starts with the words, but or well. Those aren't going to go in a good direction. So if I responded to him, well, um, you know, and then give a justification for what I did, or um, but you, that's not going to go anywhere good either. And so the best thing is just to restate what he said. Um, And one of the phrases that I've really come to like for relationship issues is, it would mean a lot to me if. And I like that phrase because it's not controlling. I'm not saying um, you have to change this, but it hopefully it invites them to come along and to make a change for the benefit of both of us. So if I was going to restate what JT was asking for, I would say, so you're saying it would mean a lot to you if when we're in a group, if I would um, not necessarily interrupt the person who's speaking, but the very first time I can get the floor, not ask them another question, but introduce you. And then JT would say, yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about. I don't want to stand there. Mm-hmm. you know, um, like a bump on a log. And then I would say, okay, yeah, that's reasonable. I'll try to do that. And then if I want, if I'm feeling especially charitable and my blood sugar hadn't dropped, then I might even add something like, yeah. And I apologize that I didn't do that last night. I could see how, um, I could have done that a lot better and how, how that might've made you feel. I love that you gave those examples and I wanted to touch on where you brought up, the transition word, the but in the well, because I feel like sometimes that can be a big kind of prevents everything that you just said from sounding sincere when you say but. And it also can lead to somebody getting defensive or causing them to, it's almost like they're becoming defensive when they say that. And obviously when someone is defensive, you're not in a good place to resolve an argument or to actually apologize. So can you give us a little advice for maybe for somebody that tends to become defensive really quick and then it basically shuts down a constructive conversation um, that leads to someone apologizing? Yes. And Sarah, that's a a good point. If you're that person who um, maybe tends to escalate in the face of conflict, uh, you're the opposite of a person who will do apologies for peace at any price, (laughs) Um, then (laughs) I invite that listener to think about, okay, remember that hot potato of blame. What's really happening when we say but is we're saying, I see your hot potato of blame that you're trying to put on me. And I'm saying, but it belongs on you instead, or it belongs on this other person or this other situation. And so I would just encourage the defensive person to see if they can grow in their ability to tolerate holding that hot potato. And um, one way that you can do that and stretch yourself is, again, by that the willingness to restate what the other person is saying. So whether it's a relationship with your um, partner or with a coworker, If you um, tend to respond with but and explain, trying to explain yourself, just hold off on that 
and instead respond with, so what you're saying is, and then the best you can summarize it. Don't repeat it word for word because we know that can sound really contrived. (laughs) But if you can restate it, and it makes it even more powerful if you can bring in a word picture. Um, I'm thinking on the fly here, but let me see if there's a word picture like where JT confronted me about not bringing him into the group. If I could say something back to him using um, an analogy that might help him to know I really get it. So I could say, so it's kind of like if you were um, playing baseball and you don't like to be left kind of as the bench warmer, you want to be out there um, hitting and fielding. And when you come to the group, it's kind of like I'm the coach and you're waiting for me to put you into play. And you end up just kind of sitting there holding your mitt and the rest of us are playing ball and you really want to get in on the game. And it would mean a lot to you if I would help, you know, give you the first pitch that way and give you an opening. Perfect. I love the sports Mm -hmm. analogy. And yeah, it makes a lot of sense. It's like you're showing empathy towards them too. Like that must be Mm -hmm. hard to feel that way. might feel similar to this. And Yeah, just another great tool to add to the apologizing relationship Mm -hmm. uh, toolkit because we need them. It's not easy. As Sarah and I described our spat this morning over nothing, basically. (laughs) Chase, also this brings me to some common mistakes that people make around apologies. Um, So saying but when you're confronted is a common mistake, but there are other things that we will do... uh, Um, when we're confronted with someone who wants an apology, um, some of those things we'll hear are, but you're too sensitive or, but I can't do anything to fix it now. So let's just move on. It's too late. Um, or, um, you know, but everybody does that or what's the big deal. So a lot of these are either minimizing the problem or putting the, um, blame back on what the person who might feel like they're a victim in some way. They didn't get their need met or they did get their feelings run over. And we really add fuel to the fire when we aren't validating to them. And so um, I just encourage people to accept if someone is upset by something, whether you agree or not, try to um, be able to empathize, as you said, Chase, and to be able to um, let them know that you're willing to hear them out, even if in your heart you're thinking, yeah, they, they might want an apology and I'm not doing that because um, I didn't, you know, I don't think I owe them an apology. Um, but just try to see if there's some piece of it that you could say, I really wish that went differently. And then in a related piece is sometimes we'll hear people say, well, yeah, I'm to blame for what happened, but I didn't intend to do it. And So there's a real ongoing debate for some couples about, well, do I owe you an apology if if it wasn't my intention to hurt you? And I remember a couple in that same premarital class who came up to us and they they had a cultural difference. He was from a European country and she was from the States. And he would say to her, like, I don't, if I didn't intend to do it, then I shouldn't have to apologize. And maybe that was something he had learned growing up. Um, but her response was, well, no, I mean, if you, if I was carrying a cup of coffee and you bumped into me here in America, you would say, I'm sorry, even though you didn't intend to make me spill my coffee. And he said, oh, wow. Yeah, I, that wouldn't be something that we would, um, necessarily apologize for in my country. And so it's the same, it's the same thing where, although we grew up, most of us here in the the States, um, we all have cultural differences because we all grew up in different families. And so, um, you know, as I said earlier on, some of us want to have that request for forgiveness. Others don't expect that and would never even think to ask the words, will you please forgive me? And so um, I think it's really important for people to sit down and, and talk about what do you expect to hear when we inevitably offend each other? And um, how can I help you feel like I'm not blowing you off? 
Well, Jen, we are sorry that we don't have more time. And next time, we're going to give you a full hour <laughs> on the show, okay? See what I did there? Put well, it into practice. <laughs> but Oh, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Well, this has been a, a treat and no apology needed. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, seriously, it, super valuable and relatable to Sarah and I today. And I'm sure, in fact, I know we will be apologizing to each other better in the future and it's going to happen. We just need these tools. So thanks so much, Jen. Before we wrap up, can you tell our listeners where they can find you online and then we'll say goodbye. Okay. Yeah. They can find my website at drjenthomas.com. It's shorthand, um, D as in dog, R as in red, J-E-N-Thomas.com. And if they click on my free resources tab, they can find a free apology language profile that they can take. And they can also read more in the book I wrote with Gary Chapman called When Sorry Isn't Enough. Perfect. Well, we'll have the link to your book and your website on your show notes page on our website at idopodcast.com. And again, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. Hi guys, we hope you enjoyed today's episode. As always, all the links are in the show notes page, as well as on the podcast description. And while you're on our website, we encourage you guys to check out our 14 day happy couple challenge. We send you an email for 14 days with simple, doable challenges to help strengthen and improve your relationship. And on our website, we also have a bunch of free resources for your relationship So we encourage you to check those out. Uh, We also have our love tribe on Facebook. Uh, We encourage you guys to join the tribe and uh, be there for support for each other. If you have questions or just need some relationship advice, we are all here for each other. Um, The group has grown to almost a thousand people um, and we love it. So we hope you guys join that. You can go to Facebook love tribe fam and you'll find us right there and if you are interested in learning more about our flagship course spark my relationship we hope you guys check it out we have a special offer that is only for podcast listeners so you can go to spark my relationship.com slash unlock and you can unlock that special offer and learn more as always thank you guys so much and we'll see you next week